So, uh, hello everybody. Uh, we're, I'm delighted to, uh, I'm Peter Yell, the Mets General Manager, and uh, that's not why I'm delighted, but I'm, I'm, I'm delighted by being joined by two of opera's greatest stars, Sandra Radvanovsky and Pyotr Bechowa, who uh, are with me today uh, and to speak to all of you about uh, the very exciting program that we have uh, coming up this Saturday uh, from Wuppertal, um, Germany. So please uh, welcome uh, Sandra and Piotr. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Hi. Great to be here. Uh, this concert um, uh, this Saturday is, uh, features some of the most stirring and, and uh, dramatic repertory in all of opera, which I, one would expect from these two great artists who, who specialize in the dramatic and, and, uh, and who sing so beautifully. And it comes at what seems like a pivotal time in, in, in recent history. We're in a new year. We have a new government. And uh, we have the arrival of the vaccine, which provides new hope for the end of the pandemic. And for opera lovers, that also means there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We can all start hoping and thinking about the time when we're all back together in theaters, uh, uh, in, one, in one room together with performers on the stage where they should be and audience members in the audience. And that day will come. So, uh, but in the meantime, uh, this is, uh, we're keeping the, uh, the home fire is burning, and uh, I, I guess in the and and interest in our art form, uh, 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 satisfied as the best we can with these performances, which feature some of our our greatest stars. And this is, as you know, we've been uh, presenting these uh, pay per view concerts. This this particular performance of Sandra and Piotr was supposed to take place actually in the fall, but uh, as we all know. With COVID and uh, the world and the, and the devastation and disruption it creates, uh, things don't always work out the way the way they're supposed to. But we're we're uh, doggedly determined to make these events happen, and we're so excited that finally now this is coming together. And I should say it will be uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. from the. This was not where it was originally meant to be, but this Saturday it will be from the historic Stadthalle in Wuppertal, Germany. I think we have images of. Of this, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know if Sandra if Pio, and Piotr, if, if you've ever been inside of yep. this hall. Uh, no, I haven't either. <laughs> no, we well, are the first time in in Wuppertal. <laughs> but I, but it I looks have. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I was, I've been involved in several Zoom calls as we were surveying it, and yeah. it's, it's a really, it's a gorgeous uh, theater. It's, it's a, it's really like a ballroom, I think. But of course, yeah. Yeah, some of the greatest halls in the world are ballrooms, like the, the famous ballroom that was Catherine. The Greats in uh, St. Petersburg, which is where this, the uh, St. Petersburg Philharmonic reforms. So uh, the program that uh, you will be performing is really a killer program for, for, <laughs> for opera lovers, and hopefully not for you. Uh, the, uh, it, it features um, uh, arias and duets from Verdi's La Forza, uh, Del Destino, Louisa Miller, uh, Balo, as well as a selection of, of thrilling Verismo uh, works from André Chenier and Manon Lescaut and Adrien Le Couvreur, uh, and even an aria from something I don't know, although I know <laughs> of it, the, the Polish classic Halka. And it ends with some of the most beautiful and, and, and greatest moving arias and duets from Rusalka. So it's a, it's a great program. Thank you again for for doing this, Sandra and Piotr, and thanks for joining us for this for this Zoom call. I know you're both in Europe right now, uh, and that's why most of these performances take place from Europe, because most of our artists are in Europe, because there's more opportunity. Mm -hmm. Many of our artists perform it, or live in Europe, and also, I know, Sandra, you live in Canada, of course, but most, but there are more opportunities, even though it's it's uh, uh, catch as you can, I guess, these days, <laughs> uh, but, um, there are more opportunities for performances in Europe in those theaters that might be open. So I guess the first question is, uh, where are you each right now? I mean, I know, but our audience doesn't know. <laughs> so, so maybe you could, maybe if you ex could explain where you, where you are right now, what are you doing before you both meet together in Wuppertal later in the week? Uh, Sandra? Sure. I am, I just uh, was in Napoli recording a uh, streaming ver video of Il Pirata. And now I'm in Paris uh, rehearsing a brand new production of Aida. And tomorrow I fly to Wuppertal. 
Okay, cool. Excited. And, and, and Piotr, where are you right now? Yeah, I'm in Vienna now, <clears throat> in our apartment, because I came extra to Vienna to have a better connection to Wuppertal than uh, in Poland. <laughs> uh, it, is a, it will be a long trip, but now we are in Vienna, and uh, I just have some, some uh, TV shows here. Uh, because I get, uh, I'm have my new biography, and it's, you know there's a lot of uh, publicity uh, around that, and uh, so I have some friends. Uh, but Vienna is really an uh, empty city now, <laughs> so I'm I'm, I'm excited to go to Wuppertal. Well, the the opera is shut down right now. Everything is now. They they have rehearsals, uh, like we did in uh, in uh, December. I was in Vienna too. The whole month uh, should have uh, many Werther performances and Rosenkavalier, uh, and I did just one performance for uh, Austrian TV, and it was uh, three, four days ago in, mm -hmm. uh, in, on TV. But it's uh, actually basically no public, everything is shut down. Mm -hmm. right. Same right. here no, in Paris. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. In Germ all over Germany too. I, I think Spain is the only country right now where there actually are performances with yeah. the public. Yeah, we're um, limited. Right. Well, and I didn't know you had a biography that just came out. Is that is that available in English? Yeah, it's first, and it will be in English too. But uh, we did just uh, first on the German in German language, and we're working on the Polish translation. Uh, well, it's uh, like opera life in three acts. But you know, I hope that many operas they have more than three acts. And then I can continue singing. Well, you you will have many acts. So you're 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 you're, you're in the prime. Both of you are in the prime yeah. of your careers. Um, so before we, I, I should mention that the concert you're both performing in Wuppertal is accompanied uh, by the distinguished uh, pianist Vincenzo Scalera, um, and uh, who was, I think, both of you have worked with, I believe. Uh, I have not, no. You have not? Have but Piotr has. First time. First time. I met him uh, oh. in, in Italy, but yeah, never but worked. It was very, very exciting about that. And he, I think he, he works at La Scala, right? Is that? Yes. 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 I right. met him in La Scala. So he has excellent operatic credentials. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very, and very I mean, in, well. in all Italian program, mostly that right. we're doing, it's, it makes yeah. sense to have an Italian pianist play as well, you know? Who really knows the repertory, right? Yeah. For sure. So before we go any further, uh, just to uh, further whet the appetite of our audiences, we're going to play two very short little excerpts of, of clips, from, both from Met, uh, from Met performances. One is, uh, uh, first, we're going to hear a little bit of uh, Piotr's um, uh, triumphant uh, performance in Louisa Miller from a couple of seasons ago. And then we'll hear, hear Sandra singing magnificently from Il Trovatore, just a little bit of each, and we'll come back after that.
so bad. wonderful. <laughs> so wonderful. You, you, you guys are so great. The, um, you know, in the program that you'll be singing uh, in Wuppertal, you're actually singing that complete aria, uh, yeah. Piotr. Yes, yes. And, and Sandra, you're not singing that, but you are singing the aria from Balo, uh, I think, right? No. No, I, I think it changed. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're uh, singing, you're singing from Forza, Forza. You're doing the duet yeah, from yeah, Bala. Yeah. 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 Right. So That's okay. It's changed. It, we, we've changed this program yeah, quite a few times. Uh, so. but, but, I it, program. Well, you know the program better than me, but it's a, it's a fantastic <laughs> program. I was, I was really just thrilled when I saw it because it's like nonstop. It's like putting your foot on the pedal and uh, accelerating right through. So uh, t tell us um, what's behind your, if you want, if you could, you know, at this point in your, in your operatic lives, you know, this is a program that you chose uh, for this moment. So what, what went into your, what, what's behind your thinking of the, of the selections? Well, I, I think that, you know, Piotr and I have worked together quite a few times and it's always been in the Italian repertoire um, in, including Louisa Miller in Barcelona. And we thought, you know, listen, two dramatic voices, two singers who really love and embrace that Verismo Verdi kind of repertoire. So we thought, why not just do the things that we really <laughs> love and we want to share with the public? So we thought, let's do Verdi, let's do Verismo. And then to, to, to add just a little cherry, you know, the icing on the top, the cherry on top of the icing to, to show a little bit of who both Piotr and I are, Piotr being Polish and me being Czech and to have a little bit of that insight into who we are as singers. What do you think, Piotr? Yeah, it's, it's what, as you mentioned, you know, that's a kind of uh, central parts what we did to get together Ballo in Mascara and Metropolitan and uh, Luisa Miller and we start with this uh, Verdi part uh, what I love uh, it's one of my favorite roles uh, both of those you know Rodolfo in uh, Luisa Miller and and uh, Gustavo in Ballo in Mascara but you know for me Verismo as, as you know it's a, a little bit new terrain uh, I did Cavaradossi and, and uh, um, Adriana Le Couvreur but uh, and, you know, for me, uh, Andrea Chenier is, is pretty new. I did my first uh, Andrea Chenier part, like the duet in Barcelona with, with you, with Sandra. And uh, it's made a lot of fun. It's just another kind of yeah. excitement in the music. And, uh, and of course, you know, to, to singing some Slavic uh, moments uh, for the public, uh, it's uh, like this, a cherry on the top of the, of the cake. It's, uh, it's just wonderful. I'm extremely happy to to sing the Yontek from Halka because it's a very unknown piece. Weren't you, weren't you just singing the complete operas in Vienna or something? It, 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 it was my project, you know, it was takes seven years uh, to, to sing it, to bring it to Vienna in 2019, in December. It was Monushko year and that's was a big, big, long project. And I'm very, very happy that it happens. And uh, it was fantastic production and uh, pretty modern, but uh, really makes sense. And I had a lot of fun. Beautiful it's music too, cool. really Fantastic. glorious music. I, I can't wait to hear to hear it. Uh, I won't ask you to sing it right now. We'll wait, <laughs> we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait for uh, for Saturday. The uh, you know it's interesting. Both of your careers um, on the stage of the Met have um, have evolved. You know, actually, uh, Sandra, this is I think next season is your the twenty fifth anniversary of your debut after singing the. The, the small role of the Countess in Rigoletto, I think was your, was your debut role. Yeah. And, and uh, um, but you, you know, Piotr, your voice has sort of grown, you know, you've really, as you said before, you've kind of built mm -hmm. uh, kind of into, into this more Verismo, Verismo kind of roles. Whereas, and Sandra, you have also, I guess, although you did, you did not quite as much, it's not quite a big a change, a swing, I guess. Uh, and we have some. I swung the other way, and so <laughs> I think I, I kind of went lighter, you know. Yeah. But we have some, we have some, we have some very big roles coming up for for, for both of you guys in the, in yeah. the future. Um, the um, I, I'll give away just to give a preview, a little bit of a preview. Well, first of all, I think uh, we had um, had announced the fact that you were going to sing Radames and Aida, uh, Piotr, which now has 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 been postponed in the new production of Aida that the Met is doing, and. Uh, and 
if I may, I don't know if I, uh, Sandra and I hadn't discussed this ahead of time, but two of the really big roles in the future, which which um, certainly really are great dramatic vehicles uh, and, and in the case of uh, La Giaconda, which we're going to be doing, oh, yeah. Probably I'm revealing a state secret there, but uh, the two of you are going to be collaborating in a new production of La Giaconda, which certainly is a great Burismo vehicle. And then, oh. and also we have plans for um, a Medea for you, a Medea for you, uh, which we're very excited about. Yeah. So, um, uh, how, I mean, how, how do you feel, I mean, in, in terms of, of, of the arc of a, of a career for both of you who, who are, who have, you know, uh, had so much success in all different stages of your careers. How do you how do you approach that? I mean, from from a from uh, in terms of how you choose the repertoire when you make decisions. Maybe could you talk a little bit about that? Shall go I ahead. go, Piot? <clears throat> yeah. Come on, Maybe I think. Thank you. I think, quite frankly, the voice tells you. It kind of dictates what what you do next steps. And there's also a very natural progression, especially since I did a lot of Verdi, um, there's a natural progression in the roles, you know, Traviata leads to Bocca Negra, leads to Trovatore, leads to Forte del Destino. So there's a natural progression and the voice as you get older, you know, it, it deepens, it matures. Mature, it, it gets... not, mature, yeah? not mature. older. <laughs> yeah, thank you, darling. Yes, Piotr, I love this man. I really do love him. And it, it's it's just, it. I think the voice will tell you when you're ready, if you are ready to listen to your voice. Mm -hmm. And I have been very cautious in my career. Some will say too cautious. But um, you know what? 51 years old and still singing what I love. And Piotr as well, you know, he's younger than me, of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I mean, how do you choose, Piot? You know, my way was uh, very uh, okay. Let's say smart. It means I I started uh, with Mozart at the beginning, and uh, I mean this uh, big difference to them to those roles what I they sing now. It's even even bigger because I, you know, from Tamino to Lohengrin and from Don Ottavio to to Radames is really a long way. But you have to you have to prove the the patience. Of, 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 your, of your singing. And uh, what you told Sandra, it's very important that when you are in one style, like in Verdi style, your voice tell, tells you how many traviatas in Tenor's case, uh, Alfredo's and Ducas you have to do to be ready for, for Ballo in Mascara or how many Ballo in Mascara you need to be ready uh, without danger uh, to Radames or Manrico. And this, this is kind of development once you really have to control and the same thing is in Verismo. Of course, I could uh, sing Cavaradossi a couple of years earlier, but you know, I'm extremely happy that I could make it with you. <laughs> you know, <Yay>! and... <laughs> yeah, we did our first Tosca together in yeah. Vienna, and it was and such it was a joy. Extremely helpful, you know, when you have a partner on the stage who, like Sandra, who knows the role and the opera so well that everybody are concentrated on my debut. Uh, because Sandra was just perfect. And you know, this is just a kind of a, a perfect conditions to make the next step. Yeah. And the next steps uh, in, in, in my uh, uh, way now, it's uh, uh, the, the big step for um, Trovatore uh, in, in fall this year. And then, uh, well, a couple of great ideas. And uh, may I say, uh, Sandra will be my, my Turandot, or I will be her Caliph. In yes. Two, two and a half years. Uh, it, it will be a lot of fun, I'm sure. Yeah. But it's, it's great to hear how, you, how much you enjoy performing with each other and, and appreciate each other so much. And next season at the Met, you'll be, actually, Piotr, you'll be doing, I guess, more familiar territory in that oh, yeah. you're, you're going to be singing in a new production of Rigoletto and, and um, doing maybe one last one last Lensky, which uh, we've had such great success at, at the Met. Uh -huh. Yes. And, and I son. Am Duke on duty on the Met. <laughs> the, well, we're, we're very appreciative that you're going to be there doing that. And, and, and Sandra, you're going to be singing Tosca again next season. Yes. Which David McVickers. Right. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful production. Um, so, what are you, uh, 
what would you say your given given the, the the upheaval in the world and everything that's been going on and how difficulty how difficult everything has been? Do you have any specific uh, aspirations or hopes uh, artistically and in any other way uh, besides life being better in the in the coming in the coming year? Uh, you know, I think that it's our job as singers to reach out to the world right now and try to bring bring them any kind of hope and and joy and happiness that we can with our singing, be it this with this medium, like we're doing with the Met, be it live, be it streaming, be it um, my YouTube show, The Screaming Divas. But I think that it right now is very difficult for all of us artists, um, as well as all of you out there. And I think that music especially lifts the soul. And I think the more we can persevere and try to make music, albeit in a different medium, um, we have to keep the arts present and alive. And that is, that's my goal. And, you know, I'll, I'll keep chugging away at it, you know? Well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, amazing. Yep. Pure, pure. Well, you know, it's really a, a very special moment in, in our life now, because uh, uh, I'm very fortunate to sing uh, compared to other colleagues uh, a lot in 2020, uh, mm -hmm. some festivals and uh, some nice productions. But uh, of course, it's uh, to keep in contact with the people, with our public, uh, it's so important. And, uh, you know, for, for us, so for me, uh, when I can talk about talking about me, you know, to be uh, uh, after this new year, you know, like a, like a uh, new situation in 2021 what we can do as a first concert in, in uh, for the med stars it's really a big privilege and uh, it could be only better you know we are in, in situation now with uh, everybody suffering and uh, not only artists also you know managers and everybody and the public also i'm now mostly in vienna and uh, uh, the people around uh, Staatsoper here, uh, they know singers. They, I'm talking with people on the street and they are so sad. And for those people, uh, programs like, like we do in, in Wuppertal, uh, to be in live contact with us, it's such an amazing opportunity to give them hope that uh, we do and we come to the normality someday. And uh, mm -hmm. I wish uh, really it will be very soon. Well, well said by both of you. I, I know that uh, in Vienna, Vienna is sort of like the uh, Hollywood of opera because uh, <laughs> opera, opera stars are, 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 the, are the folk heroes of the people of, of Vienna. Yeah. And, and you can't walk down the street, I'm sure, without being recognized. No. That's true. <laughs> uh, which That's is, true. Uh, which must, must be a, ni a nice feeling for you. Um, the, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, actually, I, one question, one other question I wanted to ask you, though, several of your colleagues who I've spoken to uh, have said that because the, mm -hmm. the, the, the pattern of singing and, and cancellations when opera houses shut down and then open up has been so kind of disruptive, it's not easy for some singers to uh, keep the kind of pace uh, or, or training for, uh, that they normally would have. But Piotr, you're saying that that, that that hasn't affected you so much, but maybe Sandra, has it affected you or... or you, uh, you know, it, for a while, I, I, I had COVID in March, so it really, it, it knocked me out for a good month. And, you know, there was no way that I could sing when I was recovering from that. But, you know, listen, what we do is, is very athletic. We are athletes. Granted, right. our muscles are, you know, these two little muscles in our throats. They're not, you know, like a baseball player or something. But, you know, you have to keep, keep them flexible, keep them active. And yes, are we singing as much as we did before? No, um, but you have to touch the voice. You have to work on it. You have to continue to do that or else you can do more harm than good. And, you know, I want to keep singing until my voice tells me not to, not, you know, because I have to stop singing. So mm -hmm. yes, it's, it's, a, it's a constant training process that, that I've been going through. I've not been singing as much as Piotr has only because I live in North America in Canada. But Piotr, what about you? You know, in my it was really like I got also uh, periods that when I didn't open the mouth for singing for two or mm -hmm. three weeks, 
and on purpose, you know, because uh, well, uh, I just uh, we just did other, did other I just did other things, and uh, for example, now after two and three weeks, uh, uh, you know, just practicing a little, maybe every five six days, uh, mm -hmm. I have to go back to the to singer's normality to to put the the voice on the, on a certain level to to uh, have uh, just fun with this repertory. And it's always like that, you know, you need three, four days practicing, but uh, I have my routines to, I'm always sure it will happen, you know, it's not like I'm nervous because I'm not singing two or three weeks, right. uh, what happens with the voice, uh, you know, that's, uh, if you have a solid technique, uh, that, and you know that it's, uh, it's nothing can happen, you know, and uh, this is kind of uh, normal life, it's, it's harder and tougher now than in, in, in normal time, but uh, um, it's, it's possible. It's possible to also to make some experiments. So we're talking in Barcelona about mm -hmm. that. Uh, I yeah. had to, to, uh, to make some, some exercises mm -hmm. to discover some, some colors or some, some, some ideas what the voice can do, what I normally not can when I'm in the regular uh, right. season, because I'm too busy with singing what I have to sing. And this is very I fun. Is, Can I say, Peter, one Sorry. thing that, um, you know, our schedules as, as singers, Piotr and I, uh, we travel a lot, 11, 11 and a half months out of the year. And in some ways, it was a blessing to have this bit of repose for the voice because my voice, and I'll speak for myself, I was very tired. I had three role debuts last year. I went and I went and I went and I went. And sometimes it's good to take a little time off and let those little two little vocal cords in your in your throat relax and and it's amazing what comes from that that rest and the miracles and how the voice grows when you yeah. let it naturally rest right Piot? yes yes that's i that's what I, I you can you can uh, read in the in the old uh, fashions biographies from caruso mm -hmm. and whoever when they have a really a two and a half months break, uh, going home and then yeah. traveling by, by, by ship to New York, uh, you know, completely fresh and, you know, ready to, to, uh, to, to, to sing. And uh, this kind of, I'm, I think we can learn a lot from this lockdown. Uh, yep. Interesting. To, uh, to be just, you know, to be somehow more under control what you do and not completely, you know, traveling, uh, the next day after the performance to the concerts and mm -hmm. rehearsal. It, of yeah. course, it's possible, but basically, it's much more important to be fresh and, you know, hungry to, to do something. And now we are fresh and hungry. Well, yes. it's, it's fascinating to hear you both say that you that in this in this reposed per, per, period of, uh, that you actually have maybe discovered something new about your voices, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, all right, so we'll be ready. We'll be we'll be looking for that or listening for it on on Saturday. Listen, before we go, um, one of the features of these uh, Zoom uh, sessions is that we offer our loyal patrons who are listening in, and there are hundreds who are listening in live right now, a chance to ask a couple of questions. So, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you a couple of questions on behalf of our devoted audience and your devoted fans. And the first one is, what led you to a career in opera? Either one of you can. <laughs> you, don't have to, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't have to give you a complete bio, but uh, just, uh, just. Well, it, in what my was... case, it was just accident. It was accidentally happened. And, uh, but I'm very, uh, my, my second name is Consequence. When I start something, I have to finish it. And that's what leads me to, to, to go further and further in this, in this uh, profession. Well, what, was there a particular moment when you discovered you wanted to be an opera singer? Well, I was already a student and I met a very, uh, in a master class, Sena Yurinas. She was uh, my professor for, for master class and she was very famous, Austrian Kamazenga. And she told me, I have skills, I, my voice is good enough. And that was my, my beginning when I started to think about really a professional uh, development. Fantastic. And Sandra? Uh, you know, I started with church choir, uh, as oh. a lot of singers do. And um, at 11 years old, saw a very famous tenor singing Tosca on TV. And I pointed to the TV and I said to my mom, I was entranced because not just the voice, but the acting. 
and that ability to transport yourself and to become somebody else during that opera. And uh, I, I, I got the bug, you know, I was bit and that was it. I said, I want to do that. And truly from 11 years old until now 51, uh, it was my goal and my drive to be an opera singer. I just, the passion was there. Fantastic. All right, so we have time, we have time for one last audience question, mm -hmm. which is what is your favorite role and why? Sandra, go ahead. <laughs> oh, thanks, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm singing Aida right now. I would say Aida. I just did Il Pirata. When I was singing Il Pirata, I would say Il Pirata. It's really, you know, I think as, as a singer, we give 150% to whatever project we're working on, whatever role we're working on at that point, because my life mission is to only sing roles that I love. Because if I don't love singing it, the audience will know that I don't love singing it. So there is, there's probably a few that have a little more meaning to me, like Rusalka, just because of my heritage. But, you know, I'm very fortunate that I sing operas that I love. I know that's a generic answer, but it's no, true. It's a very good answer. I, I, I knew she will say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, so, what do you, so what do you say? Well, I can say oh, mostly the same. I'm very, very happy that nobody pushed me to sing roles that I don't like, for example. Uh, that's a very big uh, thing for me. But, you know, there is a role uh, which we just stopped uh, to perform uh, a couple of days before uh, the lockdown is coming in New York, Novetter. It's, uh, it's a role which really uh, follow me uh, 24 years already. And uh, I still sing a young Berta. This is <laughs> it's, it's really something which I really like, I love and, and like. And uh, well, this is kind of uh, uh, what I feel and I love. Well, listen, thank you both so very much. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm so looking forward to your performance on Saturday. I know our audiences, um, which will be tuning in, the people who are watching today, and who represent some of our most loyal and, and faithful donors and, and subscribers, as well as people watching from all over the world. So I uh, can't wait to see you both uh, on camera later in the week. And uh, thank you so much. And thank you to all of you at home who are watching thank today. You. Thanks thank a lot. You thank you much. all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.